Hey, everybody, welcome to the Cannabis Journal Club, where we review and interpret United States cannabis patents and scientific journals with concise overviews of complex scientific literature in an understandable and easy to consume manner to expose the knowledge hidden in the scientific literature. We do not claim any medical utility. Of these government patents or scientific articles, we advise you to obtain your own copies of these documents. And of course, as always, I will make a point on posting the link to the article or patent that we will be discussing today. Welcome, Dr. Allen. What are you sharing with us today on Cannabis Journal Club? Thank you, Bubble Man. Hi, I'm Dr. David Allen, and this is Cannabis Journal Club. And we're here to amaze you with information that's hidden in the literature. So today's topic is cannabis for open heart surgery. <laughs> Come so, on, Dr. Allen. Open heart surgery, that's way crazy. I know, it's a way crazy idea, isn't it? But it's not Dr. Allen's idea. It's somebody else's idea. And so we're going to go over uh, this U.S. patent today called Cannabinoids as Antioxidants and Neuroprotectants. It's a U.S. patent. You can look it up. It's patent number 6,630,507B1. And uh, it's, it's a fairly large, uh, complicated patent. And uh, the, the take-home message in this patent is that if you give CBD to animals and, and uh, cause them to have strokes by ligating their artery, uh, if they have CBD on board before they cut the, bl the blood flow off to the brain, then their stroke is 50% smaller if they have CBD on board. And nothing else th that anybody can give you will decrease the size of a stroke by even 2%. This is a miracle. And this patent came out in, in 2003. And everybody should know about this. This is the mother of all cannabis patents. And we're going to uh, um, tell you some stuff that's hidden in the, in the literature because people don't have motivation to read this stuff. And it's scientifically complex and people don't have the scientific background to read this stuff and so we're doing this so you don't have to <laughs> and i will add that that is a big deal dr allen you know even just going through the patent with you earlier and going it through it from myself it's difficult understanding the language looking for the paragraphs that are buried in there that you're saying hey let's find this paragraph it's uh, it's a good service, and I really feel you're doing it much more than I am. But I'm I'm here for you. Well, thank you, Bubba man. I appreciate it. So um, now I'm going to have to paraphrase uh, this a little bit because the wording in the actual uh, patent is a little bit obscured and and it's not straightforward. And so um, they. The following paragraph I'm going to read to you refers to what does CBD and THC both do? Because this patent refers that says that uh, that cannabinoids may be of any of the compounds as set forth above, or more specifically, and uh, if you look on the on the patent. Uh, it, it on page seven at the top of page seven, and uh, there's some discrepancy in in the page numbers in this patent. So you'll have to forgive me, but the patent has uh, this one section that has two columns, and the left column is is labeled seven, and the right column is labeled eight. And so I'm going to read. Uh, at the top of, of the page seven uh, example. And uh, go, so go ahead and, and put up that uh, the wording so they can read along with me. 
So can you can you uh, show that uh, the It's up, Doctor Allen. It's up. Oh, you just I, I can't you see you it. can't see it because okay. at the top of your Zoom page right. it says right, my just, meeting. Go ahead. All right, I'll just go ahead and, and read, and I I hope that people can read along with me. They can. And so and so it says, an ischemic infarct. Ischemic means low blood flow. So THC and CBD can be used for ischemic infarcts, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, Down's syndrome, human immunodeficiency or HIV, so AIDS. So CBD and THC can be used for all of these things, dementia, and this is what caught my attention as a heart surgeon because I didn't know this information. And after I quit being a heart surgeon, I learned about this because I was forced to read this information. And so I read the following and it says that, that these two substances can be used for myocardial infarction or treatment and prevention of intraoperative or perioperative hypoxic insults. So hypoxic is low blood flow, low oxygen. And so for during intraoperative or peri perioperative around the operation, low blood flow, low oxygen insults that can leave permanent neurological deficits, strokes, following open heart surgery requiring heart-lung bypass machines such as coronary artery bypass grafts, C-A-B-G. So this was my profession. I was a heart surgeon, and this patent is saying that, that now no clinical studies have been done on this. This is just what's in the patent. And the thing about the patents are you can't get a patent number if there's any lies in the patent. So they have to make sure that every comma is correct, every period is correct, and they don't give you a patent number if you have misinformation in the patent. So the patent office is the holder of the truth of the science as we know it. So one of my biggest regrets as a heart surgeon is that I didn't use cannabinoids during open heart surgery because it's proven in this patent that they limit what's called reperfusion injury. And, and that was my profession to prevent or limit reperfusion injury of the heart. And so uh, this is an amazing uh, statement that cannabinoids should be used during perioperative or intraoperative infarcts. And so uh, this could change the way surgery is performed in the future if people understand what this patent means. And this should lead to other uh, studies uh, and comparing with people undergoing different sorts of surgeries and giving them different cannabinoids and seeing what their results are if if they've received cannabinoids or if they haven't received cannabinoids. And so this is a groundbreaking information that could change the way surgery is performed and it has even more implications than that. This may affect how, what happens to, in, in your treatment when the ambulance picks you up. Hmm. So long ago, I predicted that when the ambulance picks you up, no matter what kind of injury you have, whether it's a gunshot wound or a live birth or a spinal injury or a burn or any other kind of calamity, when the ambulance picks you up, they will give you CBD or THC 
and they will have these pills that you can carry around in your pocket just like nitroglycerin and if you have a history of a stroke or a heart attack your doctor will give you some CBD pills and in case you start having symptoms you could take a CBD pill which might limit this reperfusion injury which extends which makes the infarct worse so by stopping reperfusion injury you can limit the size of the stroke or the heart attack and so uh this patent and there's another patent that proves that so this patent proves it decreases the size of a stroke by 50 percent there's other patents that show that that CBD and THC decreases the size of a heart attack scar by 66%. So uh, this is an important revelation that ev every doctor should be aware of. And they don't teach this in medical school. The reason I know that is because I did this study called Ignorance is Not Bliss. I called 157 medical schools and ask the director of the curriculum, are you teaching this science to the new medical students? And only 13% even mentioned the endocannabinoid system. Uh, only 13% of medical schools even mention this, and nobody has organized courses to teach the doctors this amazing discovery. It's kind of like your doctor not knowing the nervous system or the circulatory system or the endocrine system. Well, that's why we're putting this information out there, Dr. Allen. You know, it's a, it's a drop in the bucket of what the level of, of data that's getting pushed into the world right now and entertainment and TikToks and all these different things. But we're doing the best work we can do and we're putting these videos up. So I guess what I would say to people is um, if you can share it out on your social media, if you're inspired by it, we'd love to hear from you in the comments section. We'd love to have dialogue back and forth. And uh, yeah, we're happy to uh, also, if you have suggestions for papers uh, <laughs> that we should, that we should look at uh, doing, we're happy for that as well. If you have connections to universities that do studies on cannabis, if you're a member of the ICRS, International Cannabinoid Research Society, we would love to be in touch with you and we'd love to, uh, you know, gain access to more and more papers that we could uh, do this work with Cannabis Journal Club. Yes. Yeah. Please discuss this issue with any doctor that you know. You will be amazed at the conversation that happens after that. Um, so please share this on social media so other people can learn about this. You could you could actually change society and maybe change how medicine is practiced by just sharing this information. Yeah, very true. It's valid. And it's a U.S. patent. Like Dr. Allen said, you can't just tell a bunch of fibs and get a patent uh, passed. They definitely, not only do they do incredible research in making sure that nothing like it existed or was publicly available, uh, but they definitely make sure that the, that the information is as correct as possible. Anything else to share today, Dr. Allen? Of course. God over evil. Ja over evil. Live it. Much love, Dr. Allen. Ja over evil. Live it. We'll see you guys next time on the Cannabis Journal Club. Ciao for now.